Welcome to the Oregon Fly Fishing Blog. Um, we're going to tie a nymph very close to this, if not exactly like this. Uh, this is uh, intended for steelhead, but and it's kind of bushy compared to the... It, this is not tied to Euro nymph standards, but it's uh, bushy, uh, scraggly, um, very tasty nymph that I'm sure plenty of trout will eat that's really geared towards steelhead. So let's have some fun with this and uh, see how it goes. Okay, here's our little winter steelhead nymph. We're going to tie up one like this. It's size 10. You know what? Winter steelhead, you could tie that on a 12. You just, you could tie it on a 14. You'd be amazed. Well, maybe you wouldn't be. You might be amazed at the small flies that winter steelhead find attractive. We're going to get a little bit of uh, this is a 532nd slotted tungsten bead. The color is quite arbitrary, although we know steelhead light pink. This is a light, metallic light pink. So we're going to properly position our bead. Uh oh, you know what we're going to have to do? We, I've got to squeeze that a little bit. I've got the curved side of the slot is up. Got that seated properly. And uh, we got a little bit of super glue here. And, you know, why not? I've got my, my red UTC handy. This is my new toy. Um, it's funny. I, I have gone in cycles on thread. Now, with this fly, it's not. Some flies, that you really want to uh, build up that... Uh, you want to make a smooth transition from the lead down to the the hook. You don't need to with this one because we're going to be throwing on kind of a, a scrunchy body. Scrunchy. Oh, you'll see what that means. Black pheasant tail. Whoa. Didn't manage to get that off, did I? Still didn't. Come on. There we go. Third time's a charm. Black pheasant tail. I want it pretty short. Now the thing that's <clears throat> when you're fishing for steelhead. Now summer steelhead are different than winter steelhead. Because if you're fishing for a summer steelhead in August or September. Where is my red wire? Here it is. Red brassy sized wire summer steelhead in August or September or October very likely has been laying in that river and has very likely started to feed my black pheasant tail winter steelhead most likely is not feeding I'm going to trim a little Find tips off of that. Lay that on there. Now, some people, it, to be technically correct, it would be really nice to um, either counter wrap the pheasant tail or the wire be, to reinforce the fly. But I go, I go with the <laughs> throw on some super glue. Uh, because, uh, quite frankly, I'm not all that good at counter wrapping. I can do a pretty good job of, I can do a decent job just wrapping the material on. But when I go to counter wrapping, 
the wire and then securing it things don't look quite as nice so I get I'm relying on my super glue to, uh, to give me some reinforcement there and this is a buggy enough so I'm gonna go four wraps there and then I'm gonna very I'm trying to bring my fingers close to that and there goes the wire trim I have no idea what I was talking about I think I would I think what I was saying here's my SLF dark stonefly and here is my Senyo's Predator Wrap. I'm going to put a few strands of this Predator Wrap and I'm going to trim it off so it's only about not quite that long. So you're not going to be able to see this, but just imagine me on my desk here. I've got a little, I'm going to have a little pinch, like maybe that big of my SLF and I'm going to put the predator wrap right across it and then so I'll be back here in frame in a moment anyway a trout that sees this nymph is going to be evaluating whether it's something that that, that fish wants to eat a steelhead I, I believe the thought processes are different now, although I should, uh, I should revise that probably. This, even though the steelhead isn't feeding, actually, the winter fish isn't, it could very likely be just having a feeding response. The same just as it was when it was a juvenile in the river. So here's my little my little patch and it's it's uh, it's kind of ratty and I'm not using the the 80-20 um, you know where one side is longer than the other I'm just kind of getting it in that loop because this is just going to be a fuzzy little thing pretty short I'm going to spin my dubbing twirler To brush that just a little bit so so you've got you can see I hope you've got a little bit of a shaggy little bit of dubbing with those uh, predator wrap uh, fibers poking out anyway this 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 doesn't have to look like a particular bug that the steelhead has been feeding on in that particular day but it but my intention is that this would be representative of a bug that that steelhead when it was a juvenile had eaten at some point in its life that's what I'm hoping for well I, there's a piece that's too long so I'm not going to do a you know with a lot of our nymphs we you know like a Frenchie or an um, a rainbow warrior things things of that nature you very deliberately create a red thread hot spot right by the bead I'm not deliberately doing that you might be able to get a peek at the uh, at the red thread but but that's not intentional so this fly, this is not, um, as I said, now if, if it were tied with the um, Euro style, uh, it, it wouldn't be this, wouldn't be this bushy. Uh, what I'm trying to say is uh, this fuzz here, it, it creates substance and uh, it's going to attract the steelhead to take it in its mouth. It's also going to slow its descent so um, you're gonna have you're gonna have to use a light leader you're gonna have to cast upstream 
you might uh, you might want to have uh, some fish this with another fly so that uh, with the weight of the two flies combined they get down um, but this this fuzzy little thing is a uh, it's a fish catcher at least that's my story and I'm sticking to it have fun uh, enjoy tying this fly and every other pattern and uh, I wish you luck out there <laughs>